of the correlation coefficient. It's something that's completely insensitive to both the mean and the scale of the predictions. There's a way to rewrite the correlation coefficient in a, in a, in a form that will make it uh, obvious that that's what's happening. So uh, if you play around with the math a little bit, you can rewrite it like that. And what you'll see is you're doing a dot product of uh, a strange mapping of the prediction. So you take the predicted value, you subtract the mean prediction, so you factor out the mean, and you divide by the standard deviation, by the variance, or by the standard de deviation, really. Um, so what you're doing is you're uh, factoring out the mean and you're factoring out the scale of predictions and you're doing the same thing to the truth and you're seeing how well they correlate to each other. So in this case, uh, if, if the blue are the true points, uh, so, they, so if the circles are the true points, the blue curve is one system, the red curve is another system, these two systems will have the same correlation coefficient with the data. Totally different. This one looks like it's way off, but it's only way off in two ways. It's way off in terms of the mean, the predictions are a lot higher than they should be, and it's wrong in terms of scale. Right? So this varies quite a bit, and this is relatively flat, but the shape is exactly the same, so they will have exactly the same correlation coefficient, which is, which is kind of an interesting thing. So what is correlation coefficient? Uh, measuring, it's basically measuring if, you, if you're capturing the relative ordering of things correct, correctly. So uh, if you are predicting larger uh, numbers when the truth was larger and smaller numbers when the truth was smaller. So it's, it's very useful for ranking tasks. And uh, as always, it's, it's important to visualize things because you could have lots of different data patterns all with the same correlation coefficients.